They played the Monster Mash. The Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash. They played the Mash. I just want to real quick clarify before this whole thing starts that this mask was ordered separate from the costume, so it is a bit smaller. Uh, not only that, but also the string is not the intended string. I had to cut this off of one of my masks because Jaina decided to have her way with the original string, and that didn't turn out too well. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for Shadowgate on the NES. Now, this is a classic kind of text-based adventure horror game for the NES, because I've decided that for the month of October, I want to do solely kind of horror scary kind of stuff, because, you know, we're all stuck at home, we can't enjoy the Halloween parties and the trick-or-treating as much, so we might as well do something like this. Shadowgate's a very well-remembered NES game, and, you know, starting right off the bat, we got save files here. I've actually not beaten this game, I've only played through the first, like, 15 minutes or so, but I'm not too worried about that because uh, it is just a point-and-click based adventure where there are simple solutions to simple problems, so if there's anything I get stuck on I can easily just look it up and some people beat this game in like half an hour So this should be a pretty quick let's play. Hopefully everything will go well The last thing you remember is standing before the wizard Lockmere as he waved his hands Now you find yourself staring at an entryway which lies at the edge of a forest the druid's words ring in your ear. Within the castle, Shadowgate lies your quest. The dreaded warlock lord will use his black magic to raise the behemoth from the dark depths. The combination of his evil arts and the great titan's power will surely destroy all. You are the last of the line of kings, the seed of the prophecy that was foretold eons ago. Only you can stop the evil one from darkening our world forever. Fare thee well. Gritting your teeth, you swear by your god's name that you will destroy the Warlock Lord. So, well here we are. So Shadowgate here, we got all our options, we got move, and these squares down here are the different areas we can move to, so if we click on that, go ahead and open through the door and head inside. And we have some eyes peering in from above. That pitiful wizard Lakmir was a fool to send a buffoon like you to stop me. You will surely regret it, for the only thing here for you is a horrible death. The sound of maniacal laughter echoes in your ears. And now we have the option to move in either this door here or the door on the right. Although you will find both of them are locked. So yeah, over here we have the option to look at things, which gives us some unique dialogue like, Oh, we look at this door. This wooden door is reinforced with heavy sheets of steel. And we also can open doors or other things we can use any of our items up here, but we don't currently have any. We can take things, close doors, hit, leave, and speak. Let we, both of these doors are locked right now, which might seem like a bit of a dead end. And admittedly, this stumped me my first time playing not too long ago. What we need to do is head back out to the old area. It's the entrance to Shadowgate. You can hear wolves howling deep in the forest behind you. So nothing really clues us in other than if you go ahead and look at the skull above the door here, it says, It's the skull of some creature. Its meaning seems quite clear. Death lurks inside. Actually, no, that doesn't even give us much of a clue at all. But for some reason, we have to open the skull, and it reveals a key. As if by magic, the skull rises. So let's go ahead and take this key from the skull here. And, uh, nope, I'm still on take. Some of these games may seem very primitive and just really not worth going back to nowadays because, you know, you gotta individually select, like, okay, I wanna, uh, take this, look here, open that, close that, do all this stuff, instead of just the controller doing a lot of the work for you. But this was intended for an NES, a console that has two buttons, a D-pad, and a select and a start button. Plus just technology at the time, that's how this sort of thing worked. But now we can go ahead and use this key here, and we will use it on the wooden door. It doesn't work on the silver door to the side, so instead we just have to move on into here. The stone walls seem uncomfortably close as you walk down the stairs. I see, and if we look over here... It's a small candle, perfect for reading. Oh, I wasn't looking at the candle, sorry. Wow, that's kind of impressive that they had you... They, they, they showed you, you could actually... I'm having issues speaking. <laughs> That's kind of impressive that they had the option to look at the candle and look at this book here. It's an ancient tome. It seems no one has disturbed its pages for centuries. 
Wow, that's a very astute observation. Let's go ahead and open the book. The book is open and examined. A rectangular hole has been cut out of the inside of the book. So here, we have book two. Or, uh, sorry, we have key two inside the book. The key two is in hand. So now, if we go ahead and select a different menu, you can see key two is here. Yeah, now let's go ahead and head back now that we got the key. Because this key two here is what we need to use on this other door right at the beginning. Everything's moving along kind of slowly. You just gotta use a key on this door, then go back, then use a key on this door, and all that sort of stuff. But this is kind of intriguing for its time, you know? There's a lot of mystery to where you're gonna end up, what you're gonna see. As you enter, you can see a sword and a sling inside. Let's go ahead and grab both of those. Let's go around this corner here, and we have quite a few doors to pick from. The stones in these walls were probably cut by the hands of enslaved mountain dwarves. Okay, so there's apparently dwarves in this world. Uh, let's start going in the right door here. You have to open the door. Good point. I'm imagining then my character decided to just walk into the door, slam his face, and was like, Oh wait, I need to open this. Let's just open all these doors while we're at it, and let's head on through this one. And what do we have over here? A shark swims by as if patrolling this calm pool. As we can see, there's a skeleton over there holding a key. We of course want to get to that key, even though we don't quite know what it's for yet. Water cascades over a subterranean cliff into a cool, clean stream. As you can see, the staircase over here is blocked by a bunch of rocks that fell down. There's a pool there. But we don't... I don't think we can do anything else here now. But I could be mistaken. We're nearing as far as I've played of this game. <laughs> Let's go into the door up front now. This long, cold hallway... <laughs> hallway. How about that? This long, cold hallway is lined on either side by half a dozen coffins. How specific. Let's go ahead and open some of these up. Oh dear. Uh, as you open the tomb, a banshee flies out and emits an ear-shattering scream. You're alright, but it is very hard to hear. Well, it's, uh... It's probably okay that I did that. The lid of the coffin is open. The green slime is quite disgusting. This one here is already open. Uh, and this one. You try to pass the slime, but it engulfs your body, dissolving it in seconds. Uh, you die instantly. No pain, no nothing. You were slimed. Oh. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Um. So once again, my character was just an idiot who walked forward. He just walked into the slime. Didn't try going around it, didn't try jumping or anything, he just... <laughs> So, uh, if we continue... Okay, we're just here. This is fine. We do have a save option, but I'm not sure how well it works. I've never used it before. But now we know not to open, honestly, either of those coffins on the, on the left. Let's see what's in here now. Nothing happened. Great. We died to get to that coffin, and nothing happened with it. The lid of the coffin is open. Oh. What do we have here? Bag 2 was taken. Uh, can we open bag two? Bag two is open. Oh, we got some copper coins. I'll, I'll grab those. Actually, you know what? Having them in the bag is probably more convenient. The lid of the coffin is open. A mummy stands silently before you. Oh. Uh, use the sword. Uh, the music appears to have gotten a bit more intense, and I'm not quite sure why. Let's go ahead and move into the next room. This room full of mirrors reminds you of the Elven Funhouse at King Otto's Fair. We have some mirrors here. The mirror has a carved oak frame. This mirror throws back a fine reflection. This mirror also has a carved frame. Alright, interesting. We got a broom over here. This broom looks remarkably like the one owned by the Sirens of the Isle of Yeklam Iret. <laughs> Alright. And uh, it is very dark. Uh, your torch goes out with a fizzle. With outstretched arms, you move slowly, looking for a light. Suddenly, you trip over something. Smash! You fall face first onto the floor. And we're dead. <laughs> so, our torch just ran out. This is what happened to me the one time I played through this, and I only saw a bit past this in the room to the left in that three-door uh, hallway. 
But hey, it's accurate. A torch typically only lasts like 10 to 30 minutes. So I'm not quite sure if we can rejuvenate our torch some way or if maybe some rooms are overly cold. Because it does say when we go in this room, and this is the last room I entered when I first played this, it says you enter a cold room. The stench of flesh and decay pervades this small chamber. You begin to shiver. This room is really cold. Like, they really hammer that in that this is a cold room. So that makes me think that there's some kind of temperature mechanic at work here. It's a large pedestal with an iron trim. It's a small trap door made of polished metal, and we have a small hole in the wall, some three inches deep. And here we go. Fear grips you as you enter this hot room. All you can see are two eyes in the darkness. They seem to be watching every move you make. And down here... Uh, what do we have? It's a heavy shield. There are only a few dents on it. Can we take the shield? Shield is in hand. Okay, he... Uh, you raise your shield just in time to block the dragon flame. Oh, good job, character. I guess it's a good thing we took the shield then and not like the axe. Uh, can we open this? It won't open. Uh, we can move to the hall where the dragon is, but why would I do that? You know what, why not? Okay, yeah, he just burned us. Whoosh, flames suddenly shoot out from the dragon's mouth. Dragon flame engulfs your body. You pay for your curiosity with your life. <laughs> there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of ways to die in this game. Dumb ways to die, I might say. Dumb ways to die, so many dumb ways to die. Alright, we know to take the shield, and we block his attack. So maybe that's all we have to do is just take the shield and get out of here. Because can we take any of this other stuff? The hammer is in hand. Still gonna block that with the shield? Use your shield for protection. It's getting hot. You don't know how much longer you can stand it. Uh, we got the hammer and the shield. Uh, take this. The torch is in hand. Oh, we got another torch. Uh, shield is your for protection. It's getting hot. You don't know how much longer you can stand it. Alright, let's get out of this room. But we got another torch. Are we able to, like, somehow use that to uh, uh, elongate our time here? Let's see. Use... Torch. Torch is lit. Okay. There we go. So we have two torches active now. Maybe I should have waited until the other one was a bit closer to, you know, burning out. So let's carry on. 